So equilibrium is a really important topic, okay? It has a lot, a lot of really important applications, basically all of chemistry, okay? So much chemistry is based on equilibrium processes, including biological chemistry. So many processes in your body are equilibrium systems that it's just really important, okay? So it turns out we're going to talk about equilibrium for the next three chapters. So if you really like equilibrium, you're going to love the next three chapters, okay? If you're not a fan of equilibrium, well, we're going to talk about it for the next three chapters anyway, so, okay? So it is really important, all right? Um, this chapter, we're just basically going to set it up. What is equilibrium? How do we talk about it? How do we do fun calculations with it, all right? And then the next chapter, we'll apply it to acids and bases. Turns out a lot of acids and bases are equilibrium systems. Okay. And then the next chapter, the third chapter, is uh, aqueous equilibrium. So we're going to talk about more equilibrium systems like buffers, uh, solubility issues, and yeah. So what is equilibrium? So to set up equilibrium right, we actually have to talk about uh, what are called reversible reactions. Okay. So uh, here's a good example that... Uh, Eventually, we'll tie it back together at the end of the chapter. So you got hemoglobin, which usually, if you're going to write it in a, an equation, you're just going to write Hb. Because hemoglobin is like a really big protein complex that transports oxygen around your body, right? Okay. So you breathe in oxygen. Oxygen binds to the hemoglobin, and hemoglobin takes it where it needs to go and lets it go. Okay. So in your lungs... You're breathing in. Okay. The volume of your diaphragm causes the volume of uh, your lungs to expand. And what happens to the pressure of a gas if the volume goes up? Volume goes up, pressure goes down. Right? That's Boyle's Law. Okay? So Boyle's Law is allowing us to breathe. Okay? Good. Thanks, Boyle. All right. And so, of course, uh, as the pressure goes down, the air comes in our lungs, just follows that pressure gradient from the high pressure outside to the low pressure in our lungs. And then hemoglobin in our blood binds to the oxygen okay, and makes hemoglobin oxygen complex. So this is just another complex, not really a chemical bond, just binding to it through intermolecular forces. All right, in our tissues and our cells, where we've got cellular respiration going on, we need that oxygen, right? We want our cells want that oxygen. So guess what? Hemoglobin releases the oxygen so that our cells can use it in metabolism. So this is an example of a reversible reaction. Right. Okay. <coughs> Meaning that it can go backwards and forwards. Okay? And really what it means is under the same experimental conditions. Okay? So that's a reaction. that can proceed in the forward and reverse, that's what we're going to call them, forward and reverse, Re, uh, directions, that's the word I want, under the same conditions. Now, of course, not every reaction is reversible. Okay, so you can also have 
irreversible reactions. Okay? So like combustion reactions are really good. So C3H8 plus oxygen going to CO2 plus water. You're probably going to make me balance it, aren't you? C3, A, so 6, and 10, so 5. <coughs> so, if, so this is propane. So pretend you're uh, grilling, okay? Grilling out tonight. Making burgers. Or turkey burgers, or veggie burgers, okay? We're in an inclusive burger environment, okay? Whatever burger you like. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you can burn propane and oxygen. Now, will, while you're cooking, will that CO2 recombine with water at any point in time and make propane and oxygen? No, that's not going to happen. Okay? So this would be an irreversible reaction. Could it happen? Yeah. You could take CO2 and water, and you can make propane and oxygen, but you got to put a lot of energy into it, a lot of time. you got to do some crazy things into it. Okay? It's just not under the same conditions. All right? So really, every reaction is reversible, but it's not under the same conditions. Okay? But if they are, they are reversible under the same conditions. That's what we call reversible reactions. All right, so turns out reversible reactions often set up equilibrium. We'll define what that means in the next slide. Um, so that's, but that's what we have to start with, okay? It has to be a reversible reaction to set up equilibrium. All right, one of the things that I think is cool, and again, I understand that's what I think is cool and what you think is cool, maybe two different things, okay? Uh, is that by the end of this chapter, we'll figure out how hemoglobin knows how to do this, okay? How does hemoglobin know to bind to O2 in our lungs and to release it in our cells where we're doing metabolism, okay? How does it know to do that? It, does, it turns out it doesn't know anything. It's just a molecule. It's a big molecule, but it's just a molecule. And so really, it's only responding to the environment that it's in. And that's going to cause it to do things differently, right? And by the end of this chapter, we'll be able to figure out why it would do one over the other. Doesn't that sound cool? I shouldn't have looked up. Okay, I should have kept my head down. And in my mind, you're all shaking your heads like, yeah, that's cool. I can't wait. All right, so let's define equilibrium. Right. So let's look at another equilibrium or reversible system. Okay. <coughs> so this one is involving hydrogen and iodine. Okay, produces HI, 2HI. Okay, it turns out that uh, that's the forward reaction. So that's what we'll call it, the forward reaction. Okay. So if you put hydrogen and iodine in a flask, okay, and put a stopper on, these are gas molecules, they start bumping into each other and making HI. Then, eventually, once you start building up some HI, turns out the HIs, the two HIs, the two highs, will bump into each other and make hydrogen and iodine. So your two HIs will bump into each other and make hydrogen and oxygen, or an iodine, excuse me. That is what we call our reverse reaction. Okay, and it turns out that you don't always have to just start out with reactants. 
of your reformer reaction, but in this case we do, okay? So we start out with some hydrogen and iodine, they start reacting. So what happens to the hydrogen and iodine's concentration as a function of time? It will start to decrease, and we can see that with the blue and the red lines, right? They start to decrease. Okay, as the, as the hydrogen and iodine start to react, what's going to happen to the concentration of HI? Increase. It's going to increase, and we can see that with this purple line, HI starts to increase, okay? <coughs> but eventually, they start to basically cause like a feedback loop, okay, to go on. So as hydrogen and iodine concentrations go down, they start to build up HI, it starts to go up. But then HI starts reacting in the reverse reaction, making more hydrogen and iodine. Eventually, that's what starts to happen. As the hydrogen and iodine start to be produced in the uh, reverse reaction, and HI starting, is being produced from the forward reaction, eventually the rates will start to basically flatten out until they equal each other. Okay, so the rate of the forward reaction is going to go down. The rate of the reverse reaction is going to go up until they meet. And that is what dynamic equilibrium is. When the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse. Okay? So that is what dynamic equilibrium is. I already used red. Okay? So dynamic equilibrium. So when it's the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse. Okay, so the equal and equilibrium part is for the rates. That's what's equal, okay? Not, not necessarily, I mean, they could, but I mean, I don't know, usually they're not. I mean, there's no reason that they do one way or the other. Not the concentrations, okay? We'll worry about equilibrium concentrations quite a bit, but they are not what's equal. It's always the rates, okay? <coughs> Notice, though, that once dynamic equilibrium takes place, what happens to the concentration of both the reactants and products? They stay the same, okay? So they stop changing, okay? That doesn't mean the reaction is done. That's why we call it dynamic, okay? Instead of static, okay? Static means not changing, dynamic means constantly changing. But it's not the concentrations that aren't changing, so the reactions are continually to go all the time, but since the rates of the forward and the reverse are equal, they don't change. You're making HI as much as you're using up HI. You're using up hydrogen and iodine as much as you're using or making hydrogen and iodine. And the last thing uh, we should uh, just quickly write down is that we can stop writing two reactions when a system's at equilibrium. We'll write back and forth arrows. And so what we can do is we can write it like this. Hydrogen plus iodine is in equilibrium with 2HI. So those are my equilibrium arrows. So that's meaning both are happening. The forward is going, the reverse is going, we're going at the same rate. All right, so we'll talk more about this tomorrow.